All right, so um, good evening, um, brothers, um, sisters, uh, visiting friends and young people. All right, so we are grateful to our Heavenly Father for, um, for his mercy and his wonderful works. And um, we are, we, um, let us be uh, mindful uh, of those going through challenges at this time. Um, but we know them around, around the world, uh, different countries, different places, our uh, loved ones, or to be mindful of that. And also, um, as we journey toward the kingdom, we should try to encourage ourselves. So we are here today to encourage ourselves tonight. Um, as we remember Jerusalem, God's city of peace. So the topic is Jerusalem, God's city of peace. Jerusalem itself um, is more like a compound word, right? So we have Jeru, then we have Salem. So Jeru means city, then Salem means peace. So that's it. God's, you can say God's Jerusalem, uh, God's city of peace. All right. So, so um, I mean, so the answer is in the topic right there. Okay. So on that's clear enough. So Jerusalem means city of peace, and it's God's city of peace. All right. So if we must understand Jerusalem, we um, we have to go through um, its past. We need to understand its future, and to understand the present right now. Okay. So Jerusalem, I mean, is very interesting um, uh, city that we need to go back in time, then look at the present, then also look towards the magnificent future. All right, so let's see. So Jerusalem um, also um, can be known, um, we have, different names for it, right? Also, so it can be known, as I said before, it can be known as God's city of peace, and it can also be known as city of righteousness. All right, so let's see that. Okay, city of righteousness. I want us to open that. So Isaiah chapter one, verse 24. Isaiah 21, um, chapter 1. All right, so verse 24 says, let's see. Um, okay, therefore said the Lord, that the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, ha, I will, I will ease me of my adversary and advantage of my enemies. 25. And I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy, thy dross and take away all thy things. And I will restore thy judges as at the first and thy counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, thou shalt be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. All right, so now they have two names over there, right? Okay. So it can be called city of righteousness and also can be called the faithful city, all right? Just right there, okay? Then the other name for it can also be called the city of great king. City of great king, okay? It's not great kings, okay? I mean, though we, though we do read first king, second kings, but be mindful that it's the city of great king. So one, one king is gonna be there. Not kings. All right, let's see. Um, Psalm 48, verse 2. Psalm 48, verse 2 says, Psalm 48, verse, yeah, Psalm 48. Okay, let's start from verse 1. Say, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of great king. 
All right. So when so when David wrote um, made note of this, he wasn't talking about himself because he knew they're going to be they're going to be I mean um, uh, uh, um other kings uh, coming after him. Of course, we we had um, David's died. We have Solomon. We have a lot of king came uh, came after him. So he was really talking about himself but he was referring to somebody else city of great king so we'll see that uh very shortly all right so it can also be called i saw you saw there also it can also be called zion all right zion right but it can also be called city of judah all right then it can be called city of david right let's see this one i i i like to read uh, this one uh, it's very um interesting um so let's see second samuel second samuel chapter five let's see that second chapter five uh six okay well okay we can take from from verse one says then came all the tribe of israel to david unto Hebron and spake saying Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. All right, so they're trying to make David king, right? So they just um, tell him all, all these things. So in verse three, so all the elders of Israel came to the king of uh, to Hebron and the king David made made a league and with them in Hebron and um, before the Lord and they anointed David king over Israel. All right. So here, David is, is, is being um, anointed as king over Israel. So David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years, okay? But then we should take note of, um, of, uh, of this five and six, seven. So in Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years, six months, and in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 and three years, over all Israel and Judah. Okay, verse six. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusite, the inhabitant of the land. All right, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come hither. Nevertheless, David took the, the stronghold of Zion, uh, the same in the city of David. All right, so well, <laughs> this, this story seems um, uh, very, um, uh, well, I say, uh, very interesting because the people that were living in, in Jerusalem at the time, they were the Jebusites. All right, and they were making a lot of noise. I, I can imagine them like protesting with all this plaque and like, David, you're not gonna come here. We don't want you in this city. Because I mean, they would have also known that the story of David and Saul, David killed, Saul killed so much and David killed much more. So they said, oh no, we don't want to be here. So that, but what did David, David do anyways? David went in and took the city anyways and they called it city of David. So, so he just rubbed, I mean, their nose, I mean, into the soil because David stood himself, I have a mandate to uphold you know, you know I'm, I'm here to uphold the Lord's mandate. So I don't care about here, your, um, your protest and your plaque. Well, sorry about that. So he took the city anyways. So that's what happened. It's, it's, it's verse seven said, nevertheless, David took the, city, the, the stronghold of Zion. So Zion there being uh, Jerusalem. So that's how um, Jerusalem become, became the city of David. All right. So as I saw before, so it can also be called Zion. All right, so we, we, we've seen um, some of these names that the, city, the God's city of peace can be called. So it can be called city of righteousness, city of great king, city of Judah, and so on and so forth. All right, so we get the idea. Let's move on. So for us to understand, if we need to understand um, Jerusalem, we, we, must, we must understand the past, the present, as I said before, and the, and the future, okay? So let's, let, let's go through the um, um, debit. So the past, present, and, and future. All right. 
So what we have here, I will grab uh, grab my um, I'll make it frozen a bit. Hello. Hello, Brother David. Yeah, I can hear you. We lost you for a little while, but you're back. I'm back. Okay, because I'm seeing um, that. It's, yeah. All right. So is it is it clear now? Because I seen that it's probably the lost connection there. All right. So um. So so the people living um at the time in Jerusalem, as we saw in this, in this um, diagram here, I'm gonna grab a pen, grab a pen right here. So the people living here, I don't know if you can see the screen here, the people living here, they are, they are the Jebusite, right? So um, the, the diagram we have here is, um, so I think I lost connection. Give me a sec, sorry. What network am I on there? Okay, all right. So um, I'll just continue. So the diagram we have here, so we have, we have, we have the diagram of um, Noah's family tree. So at the top here, it should be Noah at the top here, right? All right. I uh, just put that there, okay. Then there, I mean, we noticed already, Ham, Shem and Japheth. All right. So the people that were living in, at the time in Jerusalem were the Jebusite. Oh, we saw that earlier, right? When we read um, in um, when we read in Second Samuel. Remember that we read, um, chapter five, verse six. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto who? the Jebusite, the inhabitants of the land. So, uh, so at, at this time. The Jebusites were the one living in Israel, uh, living in Jerusalem before David um, took it over, right? So they came from Ham over there, all right? And they were originally um, the uh, descendant of Canaan. They came from Canaan, all right? So we can read Genesis chapter 10. So we are still looking at the past, how Jerusalem came to be. I'm going to go shortly into the present and we'll go into the future, Jerusalem. So let's see Genesis chapter 10. Uh, chapter 10. Okay, let's see um, verse one. Now, this third generation of sons of Noah, Shem, we saw that, Jesus, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons uh, born before the flood. All right, so we know that. Then we're going to skip to um, verse six. And the sons of, um, of Ham, right? Um, well, it's not here, Claire. Let me go to the next slide. That might be, that might be more, okay. All right, so this one is more um, clearer. So, um, all right, so, so, so it's the sons of Ham are these. So we, we write here, all right? The, the, uh, they have Cush, uh, Mizram, Put, and Canaan, all right? So descendants of Canaan. Okay, so uh, all the way down here, then we see that, yeah, we, um, well, then Canaan had um, Sidon, um, Heat, or the Hittites, and or Jebu, or called Jebusites, and the other Mamorel, all right? So we get a picture now, right? Uh, of how this Jebusite came to be the one living in Israel, uh, sorry, in Jerusalem before David took it over. All right. So that's how they came to be. So they, they, they came from this, this lineage here. All right. Okay. But then something we, um, something we, 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 we can quickly check out here, it's also the lineage of Shem. All right. Just just by the way there. 
Okay, so right here we see that uh, we have Shem here, all right? And all the way down, okay, so, so Shem gave birth to um, Elam. Uh, I saw Arphaxad, Lord, uh, uh, or Lud, um, Aram, and others. But right here, they are, they, so we can get this from, um, from Genesis 11, the next chapter. Genesis 11. Okay, Genesis 11, verse 10. So if you are there, we can, we can open to that. Just, just the next chapter there. He says, this are the generation of Shem. Okay, Shem was um, 100 years, okay, all those age. And he, and he gave birth to who? To, um, to Aphasad, all right, at that age. Okay, so, and, and Aphasad gave birth to Sila, right? He gave birth to Sila. We saw there in verse um, 12. So he gave birth to S Salah or Sela, right? Okay, and in verse, verse 14, okay, so we, we got Sela here. So in verse 14, then um, Sela gave birth to Eber, all right? Then in verse 18, verse 18, and then, then Eber gave birth to um, Peleg, and Peleg gave back to, to Wood. They didn't put that there. There should be somebody here. All right, as, as we can see in verse 18, right? Uh, Ryu, R E U, okay, sorry, R E U. <laughs> I'm probably right, that's probably all right. So, R E U, all right, we're getting somewhere with that. That's why I have to go through that a little bit there, okay? Then, then all the way, then after that, Ryu gave, gave birth to in verse 20, he gave birth to Serug, all right. Where the Serug and Serug gave birth to who now? We're getting there, right? Neho in verse 22. And Neho gave back to who? To Terah. And Terah gave back to give birth to who? All right, we know um he gave birth to um, well, let me see, one, two, three, four, four kids, Abraham, uh, let me see, Neo and Aaron. All right, so they did not um Put them out here, all the way down here. Okay, they're not showing here, but then they just put. I mean, to Christ, uh, which which makes sense. But then they didn't there to break it down that um, they had um, Abraham. So so we see all the way from Shem, from here all the way down here. All right, it's all of that. Okay, so that now will lead us to our next slide. Okay, uh, let me see our next slide. All right, so. So we, uh, we saw here, so we, uh, we, we didn't even see here that, um, so Ru, Selig, and all the way to, um, to, let me see, to Terra and Ibram. So, uh, so at, at, at the top, top that should, should be, should be let me, oh, where's my pen? Oh, let's talk it right here. So at the top here should be, uh, should be um, Abraham's father at the top here, Terra, right? All right, uh, R H. Yeah, about writing. Anyways, so um, all right. So now we have um Abraham, okay, Sarah, well, Ketura and Eger. All right. Um, what well, Abraham gave birth to Isaac, right here, in this here, but that there is a generation that goes all the way down here. Well, it's not showing right here, but I can, I know the story very well, so we can. Um, it's a very popular story, right? So I mean, Sarah gave birth to Isaac, and and, and what happened next? And Isaac gave, um, uh, married um, Rebecca, right? Yeah, Rebecca, and they had two sons, uh, Esau and Jacob, right? So that's why I have here that that Abraham, he Abraham became the father of both the Jewish and the Arab nations, right? So we we saw it here that uh, Jacob. Uh, which we saw through um, through Rebecca and Isaac, so Esau and Jacob. All right, in Genesis uh, twenty nine, not gonna read that. It's a very popular story, right? Okay, because because then I mean we saw that I mean, um, then J Jacob married um, uh, two let me see, two sisters Leah and Rachel, right? So, uh, then then he had he had some kids. Um, Rachel, Leah had um, probably uh, six kids or so. Um, I mean, altogether he had ten, yeah, twelve, right? Okay, 
six from Liad, some from um, some from Rachel, right? But then also you also asked you also had some um, some concubines, right? Um, in in Genesis Genesis thirty, but those ones they also had kids, uh, like you know they have Gad and Asia, so all right. All right, so so those concubines had um, Dan, Naphtali, but 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 mainly right, uh, Leah and Rachel, the main wives, they had uh, Reuben, Simon, Levi, Judah, you know, and all those people. But okay, but the main things that we have here on on this slide is that so uh, we have we have this this Jewish nation from here, all right, and we have the. Um, the Arab nation from here, right? So, and that came all the way for uh, Ishmael right here, okay, on this slide here. He also had 12, 12 songs, all right, in Genesis, that so a bunch of kids over there, all right? Oh, that's, oh, that's clear enough, okay? So, uh, so a, a lot went on uh, from here that would ultimately lead us to the present city. So we have, we have to skip um, a lot of generation all the way down because of time, all right? But hope that and that's clear enough. So we, we saw the picture there and we saw the picture here also how Abraham came to be uh, from Terah, um, from, from all the way here, from Shem, all the way to Terah. And then we have Abraham, uh, Abraham all the way to Jacob, uh, became Israel. Then, um, then also we have Ishmael, the, the the Arab or Arab nations, right? Okay. Okay. So now we are we are leading um, to the present city. We were, we were before dealing on the past city. So this is the present city. All right. So uh, we have few um, noted few events that will lead us to the present to the present city. So excuse me. I'm trying to. My um, Zoom is gone from this device here. Uh, just disappeared. Huh? Should log back in on this device here. So we have a few notable um, events that uh, that happened there. Uh, first was uh, besieged by Babylon. Okay. Leading to the present city, all right. So, it, so Jerusalem was besieged by Babylon. We can read that Second Kings, Second Kings twenty-four. Very quickly there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, Second King twenty four ten. Okay, let's read from verse eight. And and uh, let me see. And so Second King twenty four verse eight. Okay, so Joachim was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. All right, and and his mother's name was. Uh, was Neushta, the daughter of El, El Nathan of Jerusalem. All right. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. Verse 10. At that time, the servant of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged. All right, so the city was besieged. They were just went run about it, okay, and um, nobody could just um, they they had to do that which the king um, says. All right, so the second thing that was that happened again was the city was captured by Babylon. Of course, it was besieged. It had to be captured. Jeris Jerusalem. Um, let's see. Sorry, Jeremiah thirty nine. Jeremiah 39, let's see, uh, chapter, verse 1 to 8. Jeremiah 39 says, In the ninth year, all right, so in, in, in the ninth year of, of Zedekiah, the king of Judah, in the tenth month, 
came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. All right, so that's what we read earlier, right, in that king. So they just reinforcing that king of Babylon and all his army against Jerusalem and they besieged it, okay? So we saw that earlier, all right, here, okay? So uh, it's it also um, been mentioned here again, okay? And they besieged it. And in the 11th year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, the ninth day of the month, the city was broken up, all right? So it was broken up. Then, then thereafter, if you read all the way down to verse eight, um, it was eventually um, captured, okay? Because remember that the, the city was a, a very big wall that uh, it was believed that it, it cannot be broken into, but then it, it was broken up um, in verse, uh, in, in that verse there, verse two, and all the way down to um, verse eight, and Jerusalem what was, uh, verse eight says, and the Chaldeans burned the king's house, the houses of the people with fire, break down the wall of the Jerusalem. All right, so that was that was that was very terrible. So right, so what also happened? So the city now was now left desolate for um, seventy years. All right, many yeah. So we can see that also in um, Jeremiah 25, 11, 1 to twelve. Nobody read that. All right. So, and what happened after uh, the people were taken um, exile? All right. So sad. Um, and and I, I think while they were there, there's this there's this um, psalm that is said, uh, you know, by the rivers of Babylon, you know, there we sat down. In the very popular song, right? So they were weeping, they were reminiscing and thinking about Zion, right? How they're going to rebuild the city. So um, so there was this effort by um, by Nehemiah, Ezra, um, even King Cyrus, a lot of people. Were, um, were being instrumental through Yahweh to um, build back the city. All right, so, th so that's it. So this is gonna lead us to the, to the present city. Um, what we are right now, besieged, um, left desolate, went on exile, everybody was cut all over the place, all over the entire world. And it was rebuilt and also destroyed again many, many times. All right, so let's move on. So the present city, so the making of a nation. So as we read earlier, uh, we read earlier that, that Jacob um, became the, the Jewish, Jewish nation, Israel, earlier. But then let's see the, uh, Deuteronomy. Just before the death of Moses, before he died, he made, some, uh, he made a prophecy. So Deuteronomy 30, one to five. So before Moses died, he made some statements. I'm going to read um, verse one. And it came to pass when all these things are, are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse which I have said before thee, thou, uh, okay, said, said before thee, and thou shalt call to, to mind among all the nations whether the Lord thy God are driven thee. All right. So Moses is speaking here, right? So, and, it sh and thou shalt return unto thy Lord, thou shalt obey his voice according to all that I have commanded thee this day, and thy children with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all nations whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. All right? Okay, uh, so if, if, if uh, let me see verse, um, verse four. If any of thine be driven out unto the utmost part of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, from thence will if uh, fetch thee. All right? And the Lord thy God will bring thee unto the land which thy father possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do good things and multiply thee above thy fathers. All right. So Moses went all the way um, there. So that's so that's what he was prophesying there. So did that actually um happened? 
Yeah, it, it, so it did happen because we saw, um, I mean, this is a very popular um, declaration. Very popular declaration that we, um, we read, well, maybe seen many times, but not really, um, really dissected. So we saw that uh, Moses was saying that the Lord is, is, is going to scatter you, but going to bring you back to your land and all of that. And but several years after, a lot of um, talks and discussion was, were going on among men. When I say men, among government of uh, present time, um, discussing I mean how to bring the the uh, people back to to their nation there. But then um, somebody has to be instrumental, even even as we saw in those days where God used Cy King Cyrus to to um, help them build back then the city then, all right? So God also was using some men right now. So we saw this note here, it's a letter that was, it was written, it, it was written um, by the foreign secretary in, um, of the British in 1917. It was my pen, I lost the pen, it's right here. All right, so it was written in 1917, right here, okay, um, by by uh, Sir um, Arthur uh, Balfour, right? Properly called the Balfour Declaration at the bottom here, okay. So, uh, well, I read this many times to dissect it. Uh, what is going on here is that he's writing a letter to Lord Rothschild, and Lord Rothschild is supposed to be. Um, the the uh, kind of a British Jewish leader uh, of the Jewish community back in the day. So he said, he said, I, I have much pleasure in conveying to you on behalf of His Majesty's government. At the time, they are the king. Okay, there's no queen at the time. So government, the following declaration of sympathy with the Jewish Zionist aspiration which has been submitted to and approved by the cabinet, all right? It was submitted, it was also approved. So, um, so, so the, the king's government view uh, with favor the establishment in Palestine. At the time, Israel was called, it was, it was, 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 was in Palestine, right? So uh, they, were, they want to serve um, a nation for the home for the, of the Jewish people. And we use their best endeavor to facilitate the achievement of these objects. It's been clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religion right of the existing non-Jewish community in Palestine, or the rights and political status enjoyed by the Jews in any other country. I should be grateful if you would bring this declaration this public declaration to the knowledge of the Zionist Federation. All right. So it was signed by um, Atto Balfour in 1917, uh, November 2nd, right? So, but then we should take note of something because, because it was, um, it was I mean, carefully crafted because, because they were thinking very well that, okay, they have, they don't have so much um, Jews at the time in, in Palestine. So they cannot call it um, Israel or uh, state of Israel or Jewish state. So they have to be careful. They call, let's see, they call it uh, a nation, a national home for the Jewish people. Just a home for them to, to go stay, right? All right, because they, because they have to go back. As we saw here, they have to return, all right? They, they had to return. So, I mean, all other Jews, I mean, they, they had to return into um, Jerusalem before, I mean, it, it can, if they have a lot of population, uh, the more they are, then the more it, it can become um, a state at that time. So they had to be very careful. They just said, okay, well, they can come back. They are going to be called a national home for the Jewish people. But then we know what happened um, in 1948, right? So 1948, yeah, there are, there are a lot of Jewish people coming back as um, as Moses are, uh, as prophesied earlier here, right? So they, they all came back, many came back, then eventually to become 
um, a state in 1948. Okay, this was what you read earlier, right? And it shall be known to you, okay? Um, Deuteronomy 1 to 5. And also um, in, Jer in the book of Jeremiah um, 29, Jeremiah also says in verse 14, and I, will, and I will be found by you, say the Lord, and I will return your captivity and gather you from all nations, okay? And from all places where I have driven you, say the Lord, and I'll return you to, to the place whence I exiled you, all right? So, so they, have, they have to return from all the nations, okay? They have to return, all right? That's why this, this declaration was carefully crafted. It wasn't really called um, a state at the time. It was called just a whole national home for them. All right. So in Jerusalem now, um, what do we have there? So this is, they have a, um, three major religion right now in Jerusalem. If you don't know, I'm pretty sure probably um, some of me, well, I've not visited uh, myself and my family. We hope to visit there at some point, but probably some brothers and sisters would have gone to Jerusalem, right? And if you notice, the city has um, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in that city. So what we have here, what, what we have um, here, around here, is the um, is what they call the Temple Mount, Temple Mount, and right here uh, is the is the Dome of the Rock, okay, owned by the Islam, all right. But then we know for sure that that three is a crowd, right? We have Judaism, Christianity, and Islam here, so um, this has to be um, one religion at some point in time. Okay, so the present city now. So we, we saw also that even though they were, they, they came back, um, they were coming back to the city, several nations, I mean, tried to destroy Israel. You know, we, in 1948, they, they became um, um, a state, right? As I said earlier, 1956, um, some group of um, nations, they tried to destroy them, all right? And if you read Psalm 83, Psalm 83 says, oh, it's up there. Anyways, so keep not thou silence, O God. Um, hold not thy peace, be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies, all right? There are a lot of enemies at, at the time. Um, there, there are mainly Arabs, right? Arab enemies, um, countries. So their enemies make a tumult uh, that they have ate and lifted up their head. Verse 3 said, they have taken crafty counsel. It was crafty counsel against their people and consulted against the um, hidden ones. They have said, come, let us cut them out from being a nation, all right? That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They have formed a league. All right. So and and this was um, and this was written very long time ago by David, and it it it, 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 it actually happened because um, this six day war. I mean, I this story I know the story very well. This six day six day war. It's um, it's a story that I like to I like to um, narrate because it's, it's more of a miracle than than anything else. I mean, they had a, they had. Let me. They had. Let me. They had Egypt, Israel, and um, and Jordan, right, coming against just one country. All right, as uh, David said there in that, uh, in that chapter. Let me see chapter. Let me see, verse three. They have taken counsel, crafty counsel. You no, know? the word is crafty. So you have three three nations: Egypt, Syria, and Jordan, coming against one nation. And you know what happened. I mean, just a six-day war, right? And within th that time, Israel was able to seize, uh, was able to seize. Uh, I mean, the Sinai Peninsula and the Gaza Strip from Egypt. Yeah, I love the story of much because I know it very well. So they seized, they seized the, the, the peninsula, right? Gaza Strip from Egypt, and they also took the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan. 
and they took the Golam height from Syria within six days. All right. So it was one of those um, uh, one of those miracle uh, was there. And of course, time with three also, um, they came together to, to wipe out Israel. Uh, but that, that has not been. All right. OK. So um, as we saw earlier, right, we saw that the city of um, the God's city of peace can also be called the city of great king. I saw that earlier, right? In um, Psalms 48, verse 2. Great is the Lord and great to be praised. So in verse 2 says that uh, for the city, for beautiful for the situation, the joy of the whole earth is man Zion on the side of the north, the city of great king. All right, just one particular king, okay? And all right, so. We can also see, uh, so uh, let's see a different one too. And in Matthew uh, chapter five, verse 34 and 35, Jesus was, was uh, also making a, a proclamation at the time, was prophesying saying, but I tell you not to swear at all, either by heaven for it is God's throne or by the earth for it is, it is full stone or by Jerusalem, for this, for it is the city of great king. Now we should be mindful here that at the time, at the time there was no king reigning at this time uh, when Jesus Christ made his uh, comment. Well, I mean they had um, they, they had a king, uh, King Herod, right? Yeah, that King Herod. But then I mean he wasn't a Jew, right? He wasn't even a Jew, so he wasn't a Jewish king. So at the time when when uh, um, Jesus Christ made his permission, right? He wasn't, there was no um, Jewish king, all right? So, but then he made it anyways. But let's see what, let me see if I have it here. So let's see um, um, Ezekiel chapter 21. Ezekiel 21 should give us some idea of what we're talking about. Uh, let me see, Ezekiel, what's the time now? So Ezekiel 21. Up there, right? Up there. Ezekiel 21, um, 26. 21, 20, 27. So let's see. Thus said the Lord God, remove, remove the diadem and take off the crown. This shall not be the same. I exhort him that is slow and abase him that is high. I will, so yeah, all right. So Ezekiel um, 21, uh, 26 and verse 27, he's saying that I will, over, I will overturn, overturn, and it, and it shall be no more until he come, which right it is, I will give it to him. All right, so he said there's gonna be several kings, kings and kings and kings overturn, 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 until there'll be no more king, then I'll give it to the one that's gonna be the rightful one, the king of the city, all right? So that's what Ezekiel was saying there, Ezekiel 21, all right? City of great king. All right, so, so there's gonna be, um, if there's gonna be a king, then there has to be a kingdom, right? So there cannot, there cannot be a, kingdom that a king or vice versa cannot be a king and you have no kingdom it cannot be a kingdom you have no king all right or oh, that we are around all right so we saw earlier so that that there that, that there has to be a king right one king then we're going to see that there's going to be a kingdom that shall never be destroyed daniel chapter 2 verse 44 let's read that quickly we can find that so daniel also was um, also makes some proclamation uh, back in his day. Daniel chapter two, uh, again forty four. Okay, so Daniel says, "In the days, um, in the days of this king, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left." to other people, but it shall 
break in pieces and consume all this kingdom and it shall stand forever. All right? So a kingdom is, 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 is going to be, and there's going to be one king there. All right? So the kingdom is going to be God's city of peace. And that kingdom is going to destroy all other kingdoms, which we have right now. And it's, it cannot be destroyed. All right? It's indestructible. Okay? So the city uh, is going to have a great king. We saw that earlier, all right? There's going to be a king. There has to be a kingdom. Uh, if there's a king and a kingdom, who should be have there? There has to be people to rule over. A king cannot rule by itself. He must have people to rule with him, all right? So that's why the lamb's wife, redeemed by the saving work of the lamb, all right? So that's where we come in. Okay, so Revelation 21, let's read that as we conclude tonight. Okay, so as we journey towards the, um, the city of peace, all right, we should remember that there's going to be a king. Is there going to be a king? There will be a kingdom. And if there's going to be a kingdom, there has to be those that will rule together in the kingdom. Let's read, uh, let's read Revelation Revelation 21, let me see that clearly there. John 21. Yeah, we can't finish um, this topic without reading Revelation. Revelation is very, very paramount to this. To it. Okay. So let me see. Uh, Nine to 10, right? Okay. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, we can. Yeah, well, verse one, okay, all right. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, we have passed away, and there was uh, no more sea, okay? All right, so we can skip um, down to nine, okay? And there came unto me uh, of the seven angel, which had the seven vial full of uh, the last plague and talk with me saying, come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in a spirit to a great height, a high mountain, and showed me the great city, the whole Jerusalem descending out uh, of heaven uh, from God, okay? And they have those that, that were redeemed um, by, uh, they were redeemed by the seven work of the lamb and those are going to be uh, people like us all right so as we um so um as we journey together um to the kingdom we need to be mindful that the kingdom is coming all right the kingdom is coming and if the kingdom is coming there has to be a king also is coming all right so a king and a kingdom will come so the question for us is that what step are we taking or are we currently taking all right, to experience um, Jerusalem's glorious future as, uh, as part of Yahweh's um, prophet plan? All right. So that's the question for us. So what step are we taking to be part of that kingdom? Thank you.